What is up, friends? We are back here at oddschecker.com slash US talking more PGA Tour golf. The season continues. Just started. Took a couple week break. It continues. We're in Jackson, Mississippi for the Sanderson, but we can't get into the Sanderson just yet. We, we just can't do it. Uh, there is a contest. It is in it is in the description. Smash that. Well, smash the like. Hit the link to get into the contest. Odds Checker giving away a $10,000 grand prize. If you can name the top five players at the Sanderson this week, there's also um, secondary prizes because that is a large ask. Uh, GPS golf watches, Amazon gift cards. Link in the description of the video. Get in on the contest. We had some technical difficulties with our video here last week, Andy, but it eventually got up and better late than never. And thankfully, anyone who watched it was able to profit because it was a great week for both of us, uh, both on the Euros. Both saw um, Rory's, you know, pretty much five session deployment. Bang on with a lot of that Max Homa love. Crushed it around the boards. Maybe your top pick would have been that 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 Friday morning session in terms of maybe your most confident bet of the whole thing that ended up being a four Oh sweep. So we crushed it. You're on a bit of a roll. You had Sahithi, I believe even in the season opener. So, so Andy is starting the season nicely. That is great to see the bets, the profits, uh, but the Ryder cup, it just involves so many talking points. This one was no different. And again, the biggest takeaway for me after watching both teams full press conferences is it just straight up comes down to culture. There is just a culture. There is that these guys are playing almost for um, Seve and so much is just built into it that uh, the Americans don't have and they just kind of have to rely on their talent. And usually sometimes at home, they're certainly good enough to get by on it. But there is a major cultural dynamic shift in this event that almost feels as large as when Tiger and Phil didn't care about it. I think you nailed it. Um, I'm sure that anybody watching this video by now has probably seen the reports that came out this morning, you know, with Xander Shoffley. There were some mumblings of Patrick Cantlay being in sort of the same headspace about this, uh, wanting to be compensated. Uh, for their play in the Ryder Cup. I, I don't think there's a more illuminating inset, insight or juxtaposition than that to further illustrate what you're talking about with the cultural point, Jeff. Imagine a player like Ludwig Ober, as we learned this week, or Nikolai Hosgaard, probably by far by a very healthy margin by probably millions of dollars, the least wealthy European on that Ryder cup asking for compensation for what just occurred over that three day stretch in Marco Simone. That is the key point here. That is why we see this European team run circles around the Americans. Every time this is hosted across the pond, there is a one plus one equals three aspect of this for the European side. And no, I can tell you as somebody who spends all days looking at the analytics, the Europeans did not set up this course to favor their skill set in any meaningful way. I know this was a massive talking point for Azinger about the advantage from 180 to 220. I look at the numbers all day, Jeff. There was a marginal advantage at best from that range. The Euros did not need to pull any tricks or punches with course setup. They straight up outclassed them. They outcoached them. The perceived edge that the Europeans always seem to have across the pond is the one that you just mentioned. It is out, it is out preparation, it is out coaching. It is having a more dialed in captain that is willing to put his ego aside and look at analytics. And it is that unquantifiable thing where the sum is clearly greater than the individual parts. There's this lack of individualism that permeates through the European locker room, through their team. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. You can just lessen to any of the press conferences and see the emotion 
that is emoted from each of the European players. I think you nailed it, Jeff. It can't be much of a surprise to see the Europeans back in another European Ryder Cup. Yeah, and I would say, listen, I don't really want to buy into the, the whole like total fraction thing. I believe the word fraction that was used in some of the reports is a polarizing word because that means like people didn't get along. That's just as simple as guys probably disagreed maybe within the locker room. They just have a sure. difference of opinion. I don't think the U.S. players were friends. I saw no signs of any of, of that. And I would argue having watched all of Friday, Europe just hit the putts. They hold out chips. U.S. putts looked like they were going center of the hole, half a foot out, and somehow grazed every edge for an entire morning. They could never recover. The margins, despite it feeling lopsided at many times, the margins still always remain so, so very small. I said culture. Another word I meant to say was responsibility. There seems to be a sense of responsibility in, in just what yeah. they were passed down from everybody to then pass it down to the next group. The U.S. just doesn't seem to enter this with the sense of responsibility that European players do. And, it, you know, it is what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. What's a little saddened is it kind of felt like, I'll go on this point. I think JT struggles this year really in some ways screwed up USA and the team and the guaranteed picks changing dramatically from what we thought, because we did feel after whistling, uh, after whistling Andy, that there could be a cultural reset, like the Phil and Tiger element, that individualism could be gone a bit with speed and JT leading the, the way and, and speed. And it's so polarizing because JT is everything that Xander is talking against and Cantley in the money stuff in the sense that JT's dad is so deep in the PGA of America. JT probably has a greater understanding of how that money that is generated truly can filter down and lift up so many parts of golf across America. European players take pride in the, in the money that they generate pretty much, excuse me, propping up and lifting up the, the European tour. They take a sense of pride in like donating their Ryder Cup, what the Ryder Cup makes to the European tour so it can almost stay afloat. And JT not almost be, like JT must have felt so uncomfortable in almost like the final four months of building up this team and even when he was included on it. Yeah, I mean, the the JT one is a point that I've belabored for uh, you know, the months leading in, he statistically was about the 10th best American out of 12. I don't think that he was their biggest problem, right? I, no, but I don't he at think... least resembles somewhat of what Europe tries to do. And yeah. like he like resembled a potential cultural shift that could then like continue to pass it down. But then, you know, that can't happen in Europe. And we even saw it with their older guard, Andy, in that they're not deep enough. So the guys who, like you know, are on the team are on the team. And they can essentially, like, do everything for a year out in in preparing that core. Donald and the guys speak of, like, those main six were, like, so involved in, in preparing for this for quite a while. And everything else, and you could even include Rosen. I'd almost say a main eight in many ways. And everything else would work it, itself in. I, I, I don't know. I... Again, I love the emotion of the event. I'm sad we don't get match play on the calendar this year, so there's nothing like that until the President's Cup. And, geez, Mike Weir's in big trouble because the U.S. is just going to be angry and want to prove it, you know, almost as a, a warm-up for, for Beth Page. But I'll leave it to you. Uh, final thoughts on, on the Ryder Cup. We'll, we'll whip through Sanderson in a moment, friends, but I care <laughs> about the Ryder Cup too much. And me and Andy can, you know, I enjoy talking to Andy about this too much to not have had this uh, decompressing moment here. Yeah, it's a special week. It's probably the only week that I, I was on the West Coast for this, Jeff. So the coverage for me was starting. It was essentially from like 11 p.m. in the evening to 9 a.m. in the morning. It, it, I was nocturnal uh, for the past three days, and it's probably still going to take my body a couple of days to recover from. But it's probably the only... Uh, only event, only sporting event in the world that I would sacrifice my uh, health and well-being for an entire three-day stretch to make sure that I was sitting by the television for every single 
moment of it. I had Yankees season tickets for my entire life growing up. And I think I saw more Derek Jeter over the past three days than I have going to Yankee games my entire childhood. But that's aside from the point and probably a different conversation for us to have on a different day. But ultimately, you nailed it. There's something different, something unquantifiable, something emotive about this event um, that we frankly are deprived completely deprived of as golf fans, you know, from an individualistic sport standpoint, um, the other 43 weeks of the year where there's golf coverage on television, right? Nothing is able to quite encapsulate it. And, and I think the other aspect of it as well is the competitive starvation, right? Like I'm going to get one more European Ryder cup before I turn 40. Okay. Like this is this, <laughs> this happens so few. And I think that's why us as diehard golf fans are willing to sacrifice everything to watch every moment of this event. And, um, it feels different, right? There, there, there is something about it that is that we do not ever, ever, ever get to feel as fans of this sport on the 43 other weeks of the year. I will close by saying I think it would be a bit of a cop out for Tiger to take an, a home captaincy. Um, I, I don't know, I know why I, everyone thinks Tiger is the answer here. Tiger, no, like I'm just the... saying. I'm oh, we can go. I I I don't believe that the American players res- the the European players respect lesser accomplished captains like way more than the USA. I will say that if Zach was the captain at whistling straights, he's a hero. And if Stricker was there this week, he's a dud. So I don't want to put too much onto that because I do feel like, you know, that controls a lot I, of I it. I agree but, with that. But by winning the, way. the road yeah. game seems so important. It seems like the players respect Tiger way more than they'll, re- are they going to respect Stuart Sink? They're going to respect Matt Kuchar. Are they going to respect Webb Simpson? I don't think these U.S. players respect their captain in a way that the stars on Europe just hand over their mind, body, and soul almost in a creepy way, almost a creepy way to to their captains um, historically that are usually far less accomplished than their counterpart captains on the American side i i could do a whole we could do a whole show on Ryder cup maybe there's people that are angry at things we said and if someone is make if someone is pocketing money then i do agree that everyone should get paid but am I, as long as it's going to the institutions that lift up the game and to charities and such that's it and maybe each player should get a portion and they should play for a charity i don't know andy and put that charity on your hat on the side of the hat there are ways like Perf- but perfect yeah perfectly reasonable for Xander to ask these questions um yeah. i don't think it's I, I crazy just think to it's, ask the questions yeah. uh, um at all but it's also like 10 days after Xander does a hostage video for DraftKings and you're like this guy <laughs> like this guy where are we at Xander like it was the most <laughs> pathetic like take of a a sponsorship video you'd ever seen in your life and you're like, this guy's turning over every couch at the moment. <laughs> I, I, okay. Sanderson Farms, Jackson, Mississippi. Let's be, we'll be quick. I got, I've yeah. made a couple bets. I'm sure you have. What sort of player should I be betting, Andy, to win in Jackson? Well, uh, the short answer is whoever you want. I mean, this <laughs> golf course fits, <laughs> this golf course fits all shapes and sizes. We are talking about a tournament. That was won in back-to-back years by Ryan Armour and Cameron Champ. One of those players averaged 270 yards off the tee. The other player averaged 340 yards off the tee. They won in back-to-back years, Jeff. So, you know, the short answer to that question is, you know, it's... It kind of teeters the line as a putting contest, I would say. This is not a golf course that creates a ton of separation from elite tee to green play for middling tee to green play. Power certainly helps. We've seen players like Cameron Young, Sam Burns, Sergio Garcia, all great ball strikers with plenty of pop off the tee succeed here. We've also seen our Ryan Armors and our Cody Gribbles. So I think when it comes down to it, Jeff, um, this is the week where you say, you know what? I've been a Jaeger guy 
for uh for six months if not now then when i've been an eric cole guy for six months if not now then when that guy or you, you believe say, in. yeah the that guy whoever you believe, you believe, in, believe in whoever you think that you like your eye it's almost like your gut your gut or your eyeball test like whoever you think can actually be a pga tour winner this is almost where you have to bet this is it this, yeah, is, where. It, it, this is now um so i i for me, Jaeger has been my kryptonite. Uh, I bet him at 25 to one. Listen, I'm up. I could lose for the next 19 weeks in golf and still be up money this season based on my first two weeks of the golf season. So if you want to criticize me for betting a guy that hasn't sniffed contention uh, over the last year at 25 to one, I'm all ears. But I'm gonna do it anyway at the Sanderson freaking farm. You can heckle Andy, but he's plugging his ears with the dollar bills he's been raking in. Uh yeah, it's almost sweet. Yeah, but perfect. in, in fairness, in, like a- in, in in fairness, I do want to say if the strategy that you want to deploy this week is quite simply the difference between the guys at 25 to one and a hundred to one is nothing. I hear that. Like I am there for that strategy. I understand that there are aspects of that mindset that I agree with. For me, Jeff, it is Jaeger at 25 to one and a bunch of guys above 50. What about yourself? Okay. So uh, the shortest trigger that I have pulled thus far, although I will say I could always be talked into it. I'm, you know, I, I'm not betting Jaeger. Jaeger wins. It's like, I'll be happy for you. I'll be happy for everyone <laughs> who bets him, but I'm just going to miss it. I'll miss it, especially here. Uh, a lot of love for Eric Cole and how we can make the role. I would say uh, SH Kim is a guy that has my mind in the mid thirties. I thought I'd be getting a big number. I'm like, who the hell even wants to bet this guy? He doesn't have the greatest results, although he did come on strong to start the season. Last year, I got called out on like backing him when he never actually finished highly anywhere, but I do see something. But my first actual bet this week has been Alex Smalley, Andy, Mm. and we will not, we will not win a putting contest, but it's almost like your theory of, I actually believe this guy is going to win on the PGA Tour. I like him relative to the other names. He can approach lights out. We gotta we gotta hit our five footers and weasel in a 20 footer just you know once around, but just hit the ones we're really supposed to hit. And I love Alex Smalley here. He's in front of uh 50 to 140 on that odds checker grid being the top number. And then, like you, I have crossed 50 and I'm staring at a guy, Davis Thompson, who I bet in the season opener, hoping That's to catch guy. some life. <laughs> uh, I'm staring at a Sam Ryder who I like what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a, a lull through the end of or most of last year, but I like how we're coming. I like how we are coming on there and even higher. I, I could fall for a, what would seem I'm shocked, but well, I shouldn't be shocked, but what, what might be a popular Callum Terran, but I can buy what's being sold on the Callum Terran front this week, Andy. How about you? Yeah, I would add Mark Hubbard to that list. Just another player that has been uh, circling around a lot of these weaker field leaderboards. I have him as one of the best, if not best, iron players in this entire field. He can get super hot with the putter as well. Also finished fifth at this tournament last year. Some signs of on the completely other end of the spectrum in terms of guys who hit the ball a mile are great long iron players and can't putt. Luke List is starting to show some signs of life again. I bet List at 55 to 1 this week. You know, this is maybe an oversimplification of what we're going with here, Jeff. But in terms of the architectural identity of this golf course, really not all that dissimilar from Torrey Pines, right? Like it's a lot of straight, medium length to longer par fours. Over 30% underratedly of long iron approaches come from over 200 yards. Luke Lest, sneaky top 25 at the Fortinet last week, gained strokes putting in his last three starts. I think we're starting to see some signs of life. Finished second here before in the past as well. Luke Lest at 55 to one is a bet Uh for me. I just need to hear his name and you talk me into him. Like I didn't even I, need I to give you the last trooper. 20 seconds. Yeah. I, I just need to hear his name and you've sucked me in. So I uh, Luke List will be a bet of mine. You are on fire. You are touting Luke List. I At 50 to 1, uh, he will be part of my operation this week. Anything 
Anything even even uh, deeper here for you, Andy? Peter Quest is another player in the last mold that hits the ball a long way off the tee, is a great long iron player and has been hitting the ball really well. He's popped up with some top five finishes at PGA Tour events over the summer with far better fields than this one. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I could start giving you some Ryan Gerrard's, some D like it, Kevin Roy's, like, let's Kevin use. Uh, we don't need to waste anyone's time with that. I, you know, these are all DraftKings plays. I am probably in the Jaeger last Hubbard quest uh mindset in terms of how my card is currently constructed. Probably some room for an ad there, and then you might have sold me on Smalley. So uh so that would be it for me as it stands on Monday morning, Jeffrey. And I would expect something from me could look like uh Smalley Spenson Thompson mm -hmm. list rider. Oh my god, that yeah. was so ugly to say, but nah. the ugly it's ugly season. But as you can tell, my card construction this week looks like it's gonna be in that 40 to 60. Uh I'm almost uh, I'm not willing to pay for the good stuff, but I'm also not willing to pay for like the in-house uh, brand. If that makes any any sense, the store brands at the at the bottom, uh, the great value brands. Uh, anyway, so Andy, hope your heater can continue this week. Uh, PGA Tour season already off and running, which kind of feels weird to say in this fall season swing. Don't forget in the description of the video, hit that link, enter the contest. You can win ten thousand dollars this week just picking the top five. Uh, here at the Sanderson. Other prizes available as well. We'll be back next week and all through the fall, the fall swing here at Odds Checker.